All right, we are live. After some technical difficulties, we're here, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How are we doing today, Kyle? We're doing good. Yeah, for everyone who's tuning in, my name is Kyle Sparkman. I'm the head of community here at Pickup Music, joined by our head of education, Carl Kerfoot. And uh, today, Carl's going to be telling us about uh, a concept in soloing and how you can craft a pretty rad guitar solo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, today today's all about really just like sharing some ideas, hopefully maybe get some chatter in the comments, getting your feedback as well. Um, yeah, sharing some ideas on soloing, right? Like how to help you craft better solos, um, whether that's, you know, like in the studio, whether it's on stage, you know, uh, you know, recording, writing your favorite, your favorite songs, whatever. Uh, but yeah, so let's, let's kind of jump into it. Um, sure. Before we get started, you want to give them some, some background on yourself. Carl here is a pro, uh, touring guitarist, seasoned educator, man, myth, legend behind the scenes here at pickup music. Oh, thank you, Kyle. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, well, so I've done a little bit of touring. I toured with a band called Lord Huron uh, for about three years. And then I also toured with Albert Hammond Jr. from The Strokes. Uh, and, um, and then I also taught at Los Angeles City College for about five years in the commercial jazz music program there. Um, and I've been at Pickup for almost a year now. And I have to say it is a dream job. And I am so stoked to be here um, and to do stuff like this. This is so cool. Uh, it's, it's really a pleasure. And to be able to hang out with people like you, Kyle, as well. Uh, do you want to just tell us a little bit about yourself as well? Yeah, well, right back at you. I'd say music you're, you're releasing and all that stuff. Yeah, I'd say with all that, if there's anyone who knows how to uh, craft a guitar solo, it's you, you know, the mix of studio and live experience. Um, I'm also a guitarist based here in Philadelphia. Love all things funk guitar and uh, put out music under my own name. So, yeah, why don't we why don't we get into it? All right, great. Well, I'll let you I'll let you take it over. Yeah, cool. So welcome. I, I guess, first of all, for people out there that uh you know know of pickup as an instagram account or a youtube channel um you know we have an amazing uh platform that is a subscription-based platform so i wanted to give you uh, a little bit of a behind the scenes to get us started uh on this you know soloing how to craft a solo journey because we just launched the uh the soloing learning pathway um so i'm just going to share my screen here Oh, can you uh, just give me the uh, host there? Kyle? Absolutely, yeah. That's what and... happens when we have technical issues. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, there we go. So this is a little peek behind the hood for those of you that have never you know, actually uh, checked us out before. So um, in the soloing learning pathway, one of the things that we get asked probably more than any, anything else um, is like, how do I solo over chord changes, you know? Um, and so we really wanted to answer that question. We wanted to help people know what to play. And this is kind of a style agnostic uh, course, right? So we have things from funk, blues, jazz, you know, psych rock, uh, all sorts of stuff, right? So it's all over the map. It's more of a, a, a general approach to soloing rather than being style specific, right? So. Um, this pathway has six grades, and uh, when we uh, so let's just I'll just kind of give you a quick little rundown. This will take like a minute. Um, in grade one, uh, Sam Blakelock, our fearless leader, he he takes us through kind of how to solo over diatonic progressions. So progressions that are all uh, you know basically kind of in the same key. Um, each day has like a really awesome backing track and exercises and licks and an interactive jam that you can do. Then at the end of each grade, we have some performance pieces that correspond directly with um, the lessons that you learned in the grade. And for the performance pieces, we have uh, Miss Ariana Powell, who is a amazing, stunning guitar player. Um, if you haven't checked her out on Instagram, uh, please do, because she's incredible. And so she came in and did some amazing performance pieces for us. Um, so let's move on to grade two. Uh, grade two is uh, from me, and 
and we're talking about kind of like non diatonic chord progressions here so we're getting into uh, you know things that are outside of the normal key and then in grade three we pass it back to Sam and he has a in my opinion and I'm not just saying this because he's my boss I think the best modes class in the biz um, if you're interested in learning about modes uh, this is the place to go so we have our seven modes in seven days uh, course here again killer backing tracks killer performance pieces and Sam really helps you figure out like uh, not just how to play it, but like how to how to hear it and, um, you know, how to get it in your ear. Um, and then in grade four, I kind of have like an accompaniment to that where we talk about modes um, rather in sort of a, a vertical approach, like just starting from C the whole time uh, to a more of a linear approach where we're doing the modes of G major up and down the neck and uh, really fun stuff. Grade five is um, a bit on uh, some kind of like conceptual things of, uh, you know, like how to think about uh, little tools that you can have that will help you uh, craft the perfect solo. So things like harmonic density, rhythmic density, um, thinking about what register you're going to play things in, switching up registers, um, stuff like that. And then finally, we get to grade six where we have this, uh, this interesting concept called golden mean. And if any of you have heard of this before, it's also sometimes called the golden ratio. Um, and that's what we're gonna talk about uh, in just a minute. We're gonna do a little deep dive on this. But what's cool about this grade is we have the same track, but with three different artists soloing over the track. So first is me and then Ariana and then uh, Rafa Rodriguez, who also is incredible. Please check him out on Instagram. Um, and we present you know, our three solos over that track. So let's get into what exactly is Golden Mean, because that's kind of what I'd like to focus on today um, and uh, show you guys some examples. So we'll actually listen to these solos uh, in a minute, and you can all kind of, you know, Add some comments. I'd love to hear what you guys think of what's going on with these solos. Um, so first of all, Kyle, let me ask you, um, you know, when you were working on the copy, because Kyle does a lot of the writing for us, had you ever heard of this concept of, of golden mean before? Um, I definitely have not, you know, like for me, like one of the key points of the golden mean is, is, uh, is dynamics, but I think it's a really helpful way of thinking of it and giving yourself a roadmap and something I also want to ask you about later to like something to kind of keep in mind when you're on stage and the pressure's on and you're maybe like half improvising a solo and you're trying to like craft a good one and not just be playing sloppy licks all over the place but um yeah it was the first time I've actually heard of it but it's cool to see your take on it Ariana's take and Rafa's take which Rafa's a just crazy shredder. Ariana literally playing stadiums with Olivia Rodrigo. So that's super cool. Also, I want to say my favorite part of this whole soloing pathway is the live band backing tracks that you get to play at the end of, of each grade. That's like a super fun way to really bake in some of these soloing concepts. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, very cool. Okay, well, I have a very nerdy little presentation for you here, Kyle. I'm ready and everyone that's that's watching um, on the golden mean okay. Um, I have to give a shout out real quick to uh, Lee Collins, who is uh, is uh, one of our uh, a person that also works for the pickup team. And he's the person that told me about this when we were coming up with ideas for um, you know some stuff to include in the soloing learning pathway and. I was like golden mean he's like have you ever heard of this and I was like no and if you Google it if you go you there's a serious rabbit hole that you can go down on YouTube and uh, Kyle I think you maybe mentioned you you started on that path and then you you uh, you came back but. Um, yeah so I have presented a little bit of a quick little overview here, just so that we can get to the point right. I, it's. I don't want you to feel like I'm selling you snake oil here because it, it is it is a very conceptual thing, but it is also simple you can you can think about it in like you can go deep it's also just super simple so how to apply the golden mean to your solos. What is the big picture okay basically 
there's something fundamentally pleasing to us about this structure. If we look at this little diagram here, this little uh, graph. So as your solo goes, if the intensity reaches that peak at that, uh, just about like kind of that two thirds of the way through, uh, there's something just really pleasing to us about that. And that's, again, it's pretty basic, right? Like there's a ton of solos that do this. And actually, I think we have a playlist um, of some solos that do this. And I think we'll drop that in the chat. Kyle, can we, we can do that, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, great. Um, so if you want to, you know, poke around, you can, you can have some examples to check out, but that's the big picture. Okay. Now, but let's take a look. So, okay, sure, Carl, but why? Okay. I'm glad you asked because math. All right, Kyle. Um, <laughs> so this is where it gets real nerdy. And then we're I didn't gonna... know we we're going to be doing calculus or today. <laughs> But just check this out. Check this out. Bear with me here. So this golden ratio, okay, is is supposedly, um, you know, one, one to 1 1.6. Um, and if we if we take this ratio, this golden ratio, and we start to apply it to a lot of things, but in this case, uh, you know, if we apply it to this um, rectangle here, we can continue this this ratio and we get to we start to see these smaller and so, smaller boxes forming and it keeps going it's it keeps going for infinity um, eventually we get something that some people call the golden spiral and that's created out of this shape now that shape is found in a lot of places throughout nature okay um, so i have some examples here as you can see um, and it's really beautiful, like a lot of things that we as human beings consider um, to be naturally beautiful, for some reason, um, tend to follow this formula. Now, it's also found like just in other weird places, um, things like our body. So if you hold out your arm and you actually uh, think about the ratio of how your arm is constructed, you see that same one to 1 1.6 ratio, you see it here in the uh, the smaller part of the arm, and I can't uh, move my mouse right now, but there it is. And then also with your hand, and then if you even go through your fingers, you can continue from there. Um, we also see it in things like our ears, right? Um, now, because we see this so much in nature, artists, designers, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of different types of creative people have incorporated it into things like art. So here's a couple small examples. Um, architecture would be another example in design. Um, and of course, in music, and this is where it leads us to today. Um, so if we take like sort of a, uh, a big picture view of this, a bird's eye view of this concept, we could think of it in terms of like song form, maybe. Like if you think of classic American song form, AABA, for example, um, or even like in some cases, modern pop, uh, song form, there's something about like, we want to hear something moving us about two thirds of the way through, right? That's why songs like have a bridge, for example. Um, and uh, in things like phrasing as well. And this is kind of an interesting one, because I've been, <laughs> I've been nerding out on this, as you can tell. Um, and I've been thinking about it, like in my soloing in terms of even just like little phrases, like if you think of spacing things out in your um, in your phrase that way, like keeping it nice and simple, nice and simple, boom, have a little dip, and then something nice and simple. It's, it's amazing. It's like, so it's so simple, right? And it's right there in front of us. Um, and it's just it's just ready to grab. And it's, uh, let me just right. And of course, shaping our solos. So if we go back to that, uh, the golden spiral thing, we could see how that lines up. Um, so I think this, again, just to like a quick little last thought, I think that it's super useful for, you know, kind of if you're an intermediate guitar player and you're just kind of looking for like a, a concept, like it doesn't require any new scales. It doesn't require any new knowledge uh, or technique, right? It's just a way of getting you away from the instrument and thinking more almost like a producer, I guess, right? Um, and then if you're like super advanced, you could start kind of thinking about like the micro applications of it. Like, okay, I'm gonna apply it to my phrasing. 
um, or I'm going to write a whole track in my a whole solo in mind um, uh, that kind of helps us achieve that that perfect uh, mean that that perfect ratio. Yeah, definitely. I think it's it's great because you know it's very easy to get lost in vocabulary when you're soloing, and even it's something that people are guilty at all levels, like beginner through advanced. So it's definitely a great concept to dive in and something you start applying right away. Yeah, totally. And I think like if you're a guitar teacher, maybe, um, or any kind of, you know, music teacher that's teaching improvisation of any sort, uh, it's just a nice way to get your students to maybe, uh, you know, kind of, kind of just think outside of the box a little bit. It could be fun for them. So, um, so very cool. So let's, let's, uh, let's make, uh, let's watch some examples here. <laughs> um, so as I mentioned before, in that grade six of the soloing pathway, we have uh, three examples. So what we're going to do now is just sit back. So, you know, grab the popcorn, um, your favorite beverage, and let's just enjoy some solos here. And this track uh, is loosely based on uh, a Jake song, I think. Maybe somebody can correct me in the comments if I, th I think that's how you say it, but Jake, the song Golden Hour. And I heard a, um, I heard like a cover of this on YouTube and I was just absolutely blown away. And, and uh, I thought like the chord changes and everything else would just be a nice fit for this. So we came up with the track, we professionally produced it and uh, it's available. So we actually have the track we also have the, uh, the chord chart for you if you would like to check it out. And I think we'll, we'll drop that in the chat as well. Um, but here we go. Let's just check it out. Just wait till you hear the other soloists. Um, you know, I was, I was keeping mine. You know, I was keeping it simple for the children. You know, I was, I wasn't trying to do anything too crazy. Um, you know, I didn't want to show up Ariana or Rafa. You know, of course, it. right, right, of course. That's that's why. That's what. What, uh, what guitar you got there? I and mean, we got golden mean, golden hour, and and some golden guitars. Yeah, dude, that was actually totally accidental. Um, and and I realized when Ariana came in to film her solo, I was like, oh my god. <laughs> Like we literally have the same guitar. That's so funny. Um, but yeah, uh, my guitar was a, a Yamaha Revstar. Yeah. Nice. With uh, low wind Imperials. Mm. Uh, if you're, if you're interested, wait, low, wait. Yeah. But who I'll, I'll double check the, the maker, but yeah, low wind Imperials. What's uh, low wind? Low is that wind different from flat like, wound? N yeah. No, low wind is referring to like humbucker uh, pickups. Like if they're, you know, um, they, they kind of almost come across a little bit more like a single coil would. Gotcha. I thought you were talking about strings. I was like, I've never heard oh, of this. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, so let's check out uh, let's check out Ariana's. Let's check out. All right. Ariana's. Then we have something com- to compare to. And one thing I forgot to mention, you know, is as you're listening to the track, maybe I won't just go ahead and say it, but if you're if you're li- listening and watching, you know, try to think about where this golden mean is happening, right? Like where where is the nice peak of the track of the solo? Um, the track was designed, you know, to have a golden mean built into it, right? So um, it really you know, it's like a, 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 you know, what do you call it? Um, bumpers, safety bumpers or something like uh, for, for the soloist because it's built in, right? It's like automatically you're going to do it. But, um, but it's, it is kind of just a whole different concept to really think about what everybody's doing here. It's, it's really, really cool to see these different solos. So let's check out the next one. Super rad. That's just masterful playing there while Carl's having an asthma attack. <laughs> Y'all right there, Carl? That's how, yeah, get a sip of water. That's how good the solo was. It literally sent Carl into a coughing fit. Um, but that's great. I mean, you can really, you can hear how she opens up. And, and you do have the band as kind of a bumper, but, you know, there's, it's very, you can still play a solo that really doesn't follow that. And, you know, maybe if you're seeing it live performed or something, you know, the crowd picks up on it, but then the solo has to go along with everything. So you can, you know, that's the difference between a mediocre solo and a great one is really, really leaning into that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah. Uh, what else did you, any other observations? Um, well, she's really, you know, like she's really making use of her entire fretboard, you know, like there's so many different factors that go into it. That's why it's such a cool concept because there's a million different things you could explore with the golden mean. Like you could make a golden mean solo and like only vary your phrasing. Like she starts very spacious and stuff. And then, you know, when the band does kick in, uh, you know, you can see she jumps up to a higher register, but there's you could go a pass like just doing phrasing. You could do one where you're just using pedals where you're like, you know, you start with a soft distorted tone. And then when when you reach that peak, you kick in like a super high gain. And like it's like, again, it's like it can just be these small things that really kick you over the edge, especially when you have a band that's like all on the same page moving toward the same goal. Um, but, you know, I think the truly great solos will take all of that, you know, and and like that's what's really like if you can start a solo that's just like you know, just a few notes really to draw people in and, and, and then like at, ramp up the dynamics, get on the upper register, all the stuff. I mean, that's what really drops jaws, I think. Yeah, yeah, totally. And, you know, we should say also, right, like this is not the only way to have an amazing solo, right? Sure. Mm-hmm. It's, it's absolutely obviously not, right? There's plenty of solos that just like smack you right out of the gate or there's 
uh, you know, obviously like just the complete, like, you know, send us, send us away, like at the end of your solo, like just let us float. Yeah. Kind of approach. Um, and there's ones that just aren't that dynamic because that's just not the vibe, you know, I think of maybe like, uh, some like Neil Young stuff where it's just, it's just a nice groove floating you along and you're just, you're just there and it's, you know, it doesn't need to move. So yeah, this is of course not the end all be all. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's just one little tool, right? Mm -hmm. One little tool for you to mess around with. Um, yeah, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. One, one other thing I noticed about her solo <clears throat> when she was filming it is she does this little slide thing at the beginning and then she does it at the end and she doesn't do it anywhere else in the solo. Um, and I was like, did you, did you mean to do that? And she, <laughs> she like, didn't even know, you know? And, and it's like, it's a good reminder that, you know, when you're dealing with somebody that's at that level, um, these things that we think about, like it, we're the golden mean and all this stuff, right? Like, it's just concepts, it's stuff to help you develop your musicianship and ways to think outside the box and maybe get outside of a rut. But at the end of the day, like, you know, the goal is to kind of forget about all that stuff, you know, it's like, you just want to be free to like make music on the spot um, or craft. I mean, there's a craft to it too. Like, it's not like she improvised that whole solo. There were parts of it that were probably somewhat improvised, but everyone that wrote, that performed the solo, we wrote our solos, you know, it wasn't mm -hmm. like, it started as like messing around improv. Um, I think for, for most of us, actually Rafa had a, has a pretty interesting approach, which why don't we watch? Well, I'll tell you basically he, his approach after a long day of pickleball, he said, um, he was like writing it on his floor and he was just going basically note by note or like f small phrase by phrase. And that's how he, he approached it. He was just like, uh, I just would do one little phrase at a time and, and just chunk it up like that. And that's, that's awesome. That's not, ex that's not really how I approached it. I approached it more from really figuring out the changes first, uh, thinking about, you know, what sounds I wanted to highlight. And then I practiced like singing some phrases over it, you know, like I, I recorded myself singing. Um, and then I grabbed a few little things. I actually didn't end up taking too much of that, but it's just a good way. Uh, I think singing what you want to play is a great way to, you know, try to connect internally with what's going on. Um, yeah. <laughs> but anyways, let's, let's check out Rafa's solo and then we'll, we'll wrap it up today. Cool. Well, you w you certainly wouldn't know that he wrote that note by note by just listening to it, aside from the laser like precision. Um, but that's actually, you know, I really don't approach solos that way either. But that kind of gets me curious to do one. And maybe someone who's just starting to think about storytelling with their soloing might try that. And it seems like almost a way to reverse engineer a solo, uh, really thinking about every step. Um, that's super cool. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully the rest of it loads. <laughs> oh. But you can hear me fine. I'm still on, right? Oh yeah, you're still good. I think we're just having some buffering issues. Oh wow. Weird. Let me so, let me just refresh that page. For whatever reason, everything always goes wrong. <laughs>
that chordal stuff was so cool. And his phrasing is so like modern and and hip to me. Like, you know, he's got that like modern prog stuff. Yep, absolutely. It's giving me some like Chan Manuel um yeah. Gardner Fernandez stuff, right. which we also have a new master class with Manuel where you can learn a lot of that kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh very cool. Well, yeah, thanks a lot, Kyle, and thank you to all of you that are out there watching. Um uh, yeah, that was a lot of fun. You know, maybe we'll maybe we'll do some of this again sometime soon. This was a little test, so thank you for joining us today. Um, Kyle, do you have any any closing thoughts or words of wisdom for us? Um, well, we have that um, YouTube playlist of some great Golden Mean solos. I would say also, I think um, you know, players in the jam band scene are kind of experts at this because they have to take you know, 10 minutes of jamming and, and make it interesting dynamically. So I think you can hear a lot of that in action. And maybe, I don't know, if you want to offer some parting things to think about for someone who wants to start experimenting with this in their playing, like the different kind of aspects you could take into account. Like something I'll do when I'm playing live or just like improvising with a band and I want to stretch things out is I'll almost set like a a limit to not go above on my guitar I'm like let's keep it in a lower register here and then you look around the band and you know the drummer is starting to add some more subdivisions and pick up and the basis is getting a little more active and it feels like things are starting to move then i'll take it up to like a higher register so maybe some like some different things that you could try when you're just like you know i think the, the place to start with this is uh with a looper pedal where you're gonna have the same chords so nothing's changing and like it's all on you to drive that dynamic change so maybe yeah just some different things to play around with yeah well i think um a lot of the things that we talk about like in grade five uh can really help you uh shape your solo so i, I guess I'll, I'll share here again but um like just even the concept of thinking about phrasing for some mm -hmm. guitar players, guitar players, especially were guilty. Yeah. I think guitar players are guilty of not really thinking about phrasing, not really thinking about dynamics. Um, and, you know, and, and that's something that we could all probably do more of. Um, and I mean, dynamics with our, with our hands, not, not just like stomping on a distortion pedal or something, you know? Um, but uh, yeah, I mean like switching pickups, like, like Raf, Rafa just, uh, yeah, I can't remember if I, yeah, well, whatever. He, he does that like three times in his solo, you know, mm. and he was completely like straight into the quad cortex is what we were using for the amp sound. And, you know, I think he had a tiny bit of like ambient reverb, but beyond that, it was just straight in and a little drive, you know? Um, so, uh, anyways, the point of that just being pickups, pickup switching, right? yeah um, harmonic density like that's a you, big one yeah like but and by that like harmonic calories to to steal a term from professor richard smith um uh harmonic density being like how many notes am i playing right like uh am i playing double stops here am i playing you know triple stops triads uh you know or full, full chords whatever um yeah and then like rhythmic density as well so am, am i playing long are we like trying to sing a beautiful uh long held note uh over over something that's happening underneath or are we trying to really fill up the space right um so yeah i mean and we have like very specific concrete um examples here and i'm not you know not trying to get too salesy here but i mean this is like uh this is this is good stuff here i i really think that these these tools kyle to, to answer your question um are basically what you're talking about yeah absolutely and then when in doubt just go up to the absolute highest fret on your guitar and just wail away <laughs> at it and uh, make a really loud noise solo yep there you go exactly yeah. yeah now there's there's um like the derek truck solo in that playlist is is great it's a really short one that really demonstrates the golden mean and also as you were just mentioning with like the crazy stuff up there the nels klein solo on uh impossible germany from the, the band wilco um is another amazing example of of that so sweet yeah so go check that stuff out as well cool awesome thank you for the the math lesson i didn't i thought i was done with that but uh as you can see it's still relevant so should have yes, paid attention sir. more 
uh, yeah, man, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for helping me out with this. And thank you to everyone uh, for joining us. So hope to see you around. Yeah. Cheers. See you, everybody. See you.